Thank you, Richard. Are you writing all this up in a paper? Um, much of this is, if anyone wants a paper which has this, um, I can make it available to them. It's on my website. Uh, the polemic was published in EOS magazine late last year. EOS is a, okay, not a very popular magazine, is it? I'm sure. All right. <laughs> Uh, it's a transactions of the American Geophysical Union, but um, I, I, okay. I, can, I can make it available to anyone who wants it. Great. Well, I mean, what what we heard there was a real sort of um, uh, interrogation of conventional notions of, of water scarcity, which um, we can argue about, uh, in my opinion, long overdue, because I've never liked the conception of scarcity based simply on raw water availability. And you did a great job of unpicking not just that relationship, but also the conventional notion of scarcity, which is based entirely on, on this, 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 this notion of, of surface, surface flows um, with no consideration of storage, environmental flows, a distribution, access, issues of power, governance, all the things which reflect locally or affect locally felt uh, water scarcity. Uh, but anyway, it's not my job to uh, pontificate too much on the presentations. That job is for uh, Richard Carter before we hand the floor over to you guys. Um, so before uh, Richard reflects on what he's heard for, for five, um, ten minutes, let me just tell you very briefly um, a little bit about Richard. Richard, probably known to a lot of the water people here, is now head of technical support uh, at WaterAid, where he's been in post for around six months. Previously at Cranfield, um, doing research, higher education consultancy, water resources, particularly groundwater, water supply and sanitation, and farmer managed or community managed irrigation, um, largely in Africa. And Richard has an advisory role on this new DFID 12-month project that both Alan and Richard uh, mentioned very briefly. Richard. Thank you, Roger. Um, I wondered what a discussant was supposed to do, but if it's pontificate, well, now I know. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just um, try and add a few comments to those that have been made by Alan and Richard, uh, I think very clearly and succinctly. Um, Alan, um, well, both speakers, um, highlighted the importance of storage. Alan referred to the, um, uh, in passing, I think, to the cost of development. And I just want to say a word about that. Um, African groundwater development is very expensive, as, as many of us know. And yet, if you compare the cost of, um, of drilling a borehole and equipping it with a hand pump to serve a community with the cost of uh, for example, domestic rainwater harvesting and, and an above-ground storage reservoir, you're looking at um, something like a, a tenth of the cost to develop groundwater compared to that domestic rainwater harvesting. So despite what is perceived as a very high cost of, of development in Africa, um, of, of groundwater development, it's, it's still cheap. Um, compared to uh, some other options. Alan also mentioned the, um, the difficulty in modeling climate change impacts, this, this um, issue of the propagation of uncertainty. And I think that's a phrase that Richard's used in, or sim similar to a phrase that you've used in some of your publications, Richard. Um, the propagation of uncertainty from the general circulation models through downscaled um, uh, equivalent to rainfall, to runoff, and, and to groundwater recharge. And we're just building in increasing uncertainty through that process. There's a very good il illustration from um, parts of the Sahel, which in the, the period from the mid-60s, uh, for about 30 years, experienced the biggest change in rainfall, I think, anywhere on the planet. Um, a downward trend in rainfall, which of course um, led to uh, falling groundwater levels and reducing river flows. Well, actually, no. Um, it led to exactly the opposite, rising groundwater levels and in places increasing river flows. 
the Sahelian paradox, um, and a paradox which is accounted for by the much larger impact of land use change over that period compared to the impact of climate change. So I think it, it reinforces the importance of looking at um, climate change, not on its own, but alongside um, population changes and demographics, which Alan referred to, and, and the corresponding impacts on the environment, and, and particularly on land use. Alan also referred to um, the reliability of, of water points, of, of groundwater sources, um, and, and uh, the relation of reliability to, to hydrogeology and also to technology choice. I'd just like to add in one thing there, and that is the, um, the quality of the design and the construction of, of water points, of groundwater sources, and particularly the timing of construction. Because often it's the timing of well drilling or well uh, hand dug well construction which determines um, how likely they are to continue to supply water through dry periods, either um, seasonal dry periods or drought years. Um, Alan also <coughs> referred to the, um, the potential for increasing demand and increasing competition um, in the light of, of climate change and likely adaptations to climate change um, is there likely to be increasing competition over groundwater in Africa? I think the short answer is, is um, yes, that is possible, but I think it's a very different situation to the one that we have in India, for example, um, with, with highly subsidized um, energy uh, for agricultural groundwater use. And the combination of, of both technology and policy um, can help uh, very much to manage that, that likely competition in the future. And a good example of this is in the um, northern Nigerian uh, floodplains or Fadamas, um, where a very extensive small-scale groundwater development has been carried out. Um, and yet the um, um, competition has, has not um, been the same as the same story as we've seen in India. I can expand on that if, if necessary. Richard um, emphasized the importance of um, climatic and hydrological variability, and I think th this is a really important point. The existing uh, variability of climate and hydrology to put alongside these other aspects of population growth and environmental um, impact. I don't need to repeat, I think, the very clear explanation Richard gave of, of the questionable assumptions behind the whole physical water scarcity uh, debate. Um, but what may be interesting is to relate that to um, the, the uh, concept of economic water scarcity, with which the International Water Management Institute came up in their comprehensive assessment of water in agriculture. And in fact, most of the map of Africa um, is actually um, shaded in as experiencing economic water scarcity rather than physical water scarcity, simply because the investments haven't been made in the infrastructure. Um, Richard also very uh, competently um, covered the, the complexity of water as, as representing stores and flows with a time dimension and high spatial variability. So it's a very complex um, resource and material that we're dealing with. And the importance of green water in that picture is, is uh, a really key point. I'll just finish by saying that it seems to me that above all, um, what we need in this debate and, and the discussion this evening is, is facts. And, and we're a bit short on on facts in relation to demand for groundwater, um, in relation to um, possible changes, present changes and future changes in groundwater recharge, and therefore the, the renewable resource, and what's actually happening to groundwater levels. 
in many of the um, situations that I, I visit in Africa, I ask the question, what's happening to groundwater levels? And people say, oh, they're falling. And then I say, well, how do you know? Um, do you monitor? No. Um, all our water points have hand pumps. Hand pumps don't have access points for water level monitoring, so we don't actually know. Um, so I'd, I would appeal for more facts on both the demand side and the supply side of groundwater, because if we're going to answer the question, groundwater, a resource under threat, then I think we, we have, to, have to say, is it really? Thank you, Roger. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Great.